Facts, we live in that luxury. My niggas be drilling the life as a villain. We work trying to flip at that peso. I lost my nigga, think about him every day. Still another day go. She wanna fuck, I just want the top. So I show the shorty his case closed. We took two hours, turned into a dub. We learned how to switch up that angle. Switch up that angle. Tiger stripes on her booty like bangles. Stop! Where is Mr. I grew up during the 1980s in a very tight knit community in Georgia. When I was a kid, I used to love camping in my backyard. Almost every Friday night, me and my little brother Donnie would set up a tent in our backyard and spend the night playing with our G.I. Joes inside the tent. Our neighborhood was nice, but the surrounding area was a bit shady. God damn! A bit shady? The left part, your neighborhood, looks like a great suburban you know what I mean? Like, awesome. Kind of sus. But still great neighborhood. But then you got the other side that looks like... Cluckness and... Mr. Cluck himself made that shit. You see, this was at the height of the crack cocaine epidemic. And within a few years, our small town became infested by addicts and drug dealers. I remember there was an old man named Mr. Carl, who was once a pilot in World War II. He used to live across the street from us. His wife died of cancer around 1984. Damn. And after that, he went off the deep end. Damn. Three years after his wife's death, he became addicted to crack and began wandering the streets at night. It wasn't long after that when his house got repossessed by the bank and Mr. Carl became homeless. Me and Donnie would see him almost every morning sleeping on a bench at our bus stop. Sometimes, he would be awake and would talk to us. We knew Mr. Carl, so we weren't afraid of him, and he never tried anything with So what? That... Oh, sorry. So what? I don't care. He looks 60 and up. And, just because y'all know this mother clucker, don't mean y'all know this mother clucker. With us, he was always very friendly. After a while, Donnie and I noticed that Mr. Coral was no longer around. We asked our parents if they knew anything about what might have happened to him, but they didn't have a clue. I can't recall how much time went by since the disappearance of Mr. Coral, but I would say it was at least a month. So on one Friday night, me and my brother were in our backyard playing with these rubber band rifles our dad made for us. It was a piece of wood with a wooden clip glued to the top of it and a nail sticking out the front so you could stretch a rubber band around the nail and clip it to the top. That way when you release the clip, the rubber band went flying. Me and Donnie were shooting up plastic toy soldiers when we heard something rustling in the bushes outside. Now, this is Georgia. We've chased away our fair share of raccoons and stray dogs. And with our new makeshift weapons, we were feeling extra brave that night. <laughs> That's not funny, but it is funny. Cluckness is about, is about to happen, and they got some wooden-ass, weak-ass guns. We decided not to go get our dad, and that we would handle the intruder wow. ourselves. So we both exited the tent, and made our way to the very back of the yard, where a chain-link fence separated our property from a small forest area. Donnie had brought along the flashlight, and was pointing Gosh. it into the forest just beyond God, the damn. fence. When we got to the fence line, a figure emerged from behind a tree. I recognized the jacket that the person was wearing. It was a dark brown bomber-style jacket, and I saw that the person was also wearing one of those army veteran caps. There's only one person I knew who wore a jacket like that. Mr. Carl. However, when I got a better look at the guy in the woods, it didn't really look like Mr. Carl. He was definitely wearing his oh, clothing. Shit. 
but the man appeared to be way too young to be Mr. Carl. I couldn't get a good look at the man's face. He was looking down, so the bill of his cap concealed his features. That's when I noticed the dark red stains all over the man's jacket and jeans. Me and Donnie just stared at the man for about 30 seconds before asking him what he was doing back there. Right. Right. Even at that age, you gotta have like some common sense. You haven't seen old dude right in a minute, in a month or so. Then out the ass, out the random, out some cocky bushes. You see a guy wearing his exact clothes with some blood stains on it. And y'all proceed to talk to his mother, ask him questions instead of haul ass to your house. Which I do not recommend haul ass into your house because he can clearly see what house y'all stay in. The man then reached down and grabbed a large axe that was lying at his feet. He then began coming towards the fence. Me and my brother dropped our wooden guns and took off back towards the house. As soon as I turned around, I felt something fly past my head. Shit. I looked to the side to see the axe flipping through the air. It crashed into the tent, causing it to collapse. The rest of that night is a blur to me. According to our dad, when me and Don burst into the house, we were absolutely hysterical. It took about an hour to get the full story out of us. And by that time, the mysterious man in Mr. Carl's jacket was gone. I just remember my parents talking to a police officer in the living room later that night. As far as I'm aware, there was never any follow-up, and I don't know if they ever caught the guy or retrieved the axe he threw into our backyard. This incident effectively put an end to our Friday night camping. Oh yeah? And we never figured out what exactly happened to Mr. Carl. So the man is still at large. That's what you're saying. Y'all, y'all, y'all cops, y'all security in that neighborhood, in that town, or is ass? It's, it's, it's pure, like, the man, the man is still at large, wearing old dude's clothes, and he knows where y'all live. Three clucks don't make a good cluck. What? I don't know. Man, I, I'm just... <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't. I. They're clucked. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. We love you. Stay happy. My family.